Right, so today we're going to mod the Xiaomi Yi for an external microphone input. Um, I did try to figure out whether I could fit a very small surface mount jack, and it doesn't look very feasible. It's possible you could have it sticking out a lot, but I don't think that would be very sturdy. So I'm going to do what I did to my contour, uh, which is to wire in just a pigtail. Um, make sure you get an extension that has the correct input and output. Make sure it works before you go cutting it up. But then we're going to look to just separate the wires and uh, this happens to be dual mono. And we're going to wire these two together to the positive side in here. So, so we'll have positive, these two wires combined, negative or black wire in, in this case um, will be this uh, shielding wire. I've tested this. I've done this once before with this extension. It's really nice because it has non-enameled wire. Those can be really tough to solder with. If you're not very good at soldering, I would suggest just skipping it if you find one that has enameled wire. You can use a lighter to burn the enamel off and then make an attempt at soldering, but it's, it's generally very delicate. Um, the wires tend to be very thin. And these are, they're not thick, but they're, they're substantial. It's, it's much easier to solder this, especially if you have kind of mediocre soldering skills like I do. So onto the Yi, we've got to strip this basically down to its component parts. And there's lots of tear down videos. If I don't do a very good job or if you miss something here, don't worry. Um, just look up another video. Um, basically, this face plate comes off and then the camera body can be removed. Um, step one, definitely take your battery out, take your SD card out, anything that could be damaged that you might want to reuse, remove. So that done, we're gonna start prying on the face of this, and having done this before, I saw a lot of people using guitar picks. I much prefer a very thin blade, something close to a razor, it's like a utility razor, and then a standard stiff utility blade. This is really strong, very good for, for prying that face away. Um, so let's do it. Let's mod our Yi. If you're having trouble in one spot, maybe move around to the other side and see if you can get it from the other end. Um, again, I've done this before. It was a little more snug the first time this came apart. Definitely take your time here, though. Uh, take your time with this whole project. There's a lot of very delicate parts here, and you'll probably ruin the camera if you manage to break something inside. Um, there's very few parts that wouldn't yield a non-functioning camera if they were broken. So take it easy on your cup of tea and keep those jitters down. This spot was tight the first time through as well. So I'm just going back and forth and I'm just going to try to work it from both sides and see which gives up less of a fight. Now here's where a guitar pick, if I had one laying about, would be pretty handy um, because they're a little thicker. You can pry a little bit more easily. Oh, this is fighting me this time. There we go. All right, so the face is away. There's really not much more to it. You can see the little hooks, hopefully, that it uses to cling to the body. And here's where it gets very sensitive. Make sure that um, you don't force anything from this point. Um, I probably should remove the screws first. So you're gonna need something like an eyegla eyeglass screwdriver. Um, these are super cheap and most of them actually hold up well. So grab a couple, throw them in your kit. These screws are very small, so my, my standard screwdrivers were just too large for this. I had to dig around and find my eyeglass screwdriver. Don't, uh, don't try to do it with a larger screwdriver. If they won't go, you'll strip them pretty easily, and then you might have to even delicately drill out one of them. Um, this is in here pretty tightly, so I wouldn't worry if you, if you lose a screw or if you had to drill one out. I wouldn't be too concerned that it's going to move around, but it's probably gonna be strongest if everything is left in place. So that's it, basically this is just the back of the shell. We've got the camera out, and now we can see on this side, hopefully this remains in focus. This is what we aim to replace today. So we're gonna actually desolder this entirely, and then hopefully we're gonna be able to thread everything through in through this hole, which will open up and into here. And I'd like to tie the wires on the inside so that if it does get yanked on, it's not going to come away from the, I'm going to call it the motherboard. Um, 
right here because these traces, these, these solder pans are pretty small and they do appear to be uh, surface mount only, which doesn't have the mechanical strength of something that would go through, but that actually makes it easier for us. We can just do a, a very light touch of, of the soldering iron um, to remove these and then the same again to replace them with the new wires. Um, again, assuming you're proficient with solder, don't fret if you're not. This looks to be relatively straightforward. We'll see how it goes in the end and maybe I'll have some advice for you. But uh, I'm, I'm going to get to it here. We're going we're gonna to start by cleaning my crappy soldering iron, maybe. Um, so I've got some tip tinner and cleaner, just a little cheapo tub of stuff that kind of makes a crappy looking soldering iron a little more useful. And then uh, hopefully I can keep this all in focus. Bear with me if I don't. Um, I'll take some good pictures before I, I reassemble all of this. So just like that, just a touch of the iron and the old microphone is way. Now don't worry about the orientation. Um, looking here on, on the main board, there is a little plus on the positive side. That's what we're going to solder our two wires for the dual mono setup here. Um, you may only have one. Um, you'll, you'll have to do some testing if you have like the smartphone style, what they call the TRRS, where it has four positions instead of three, so that this has three posts. Um, TRRS, which is what most smartphones use, have a four position. Um, that I have not soldered, so I can't, I can't guide you there, but I'm sure there's information out there other YouTubers or something like that. So now I've just got to strip the ends of my positive leads. I should mention that it probably won't matter which um, orientation you use if you do get this backwards. As long as you get, in a case of like a dual mono, you get uh, the same pair together. So you're not pulling a positive and a negative everything should work out fine. Um, audio doesn't generally care which direction it runs unless you're running multiple sources of audio and something's out of phase. They'll, to a minor extent at least, cancel each other out. So I'm actually going to tin that. Yeah. Tinning is just putting a little bit of solder on there. And I have some big thick solder here, but I, I hate working on small things with this. So I have my favorite invention ever, my solder pen, which is just a coil of solder in an old pen. It works out great for applying it without getting your hand too close or having wiggly, drippy wire. So this shouldn't take too much. Just a, a little bit of heat in the wire and then just a dribble of solder on the end. So now that this is tinned, I'm going to try to figure out how I'd like it to come in to this. And I think I'm just going to drill a hole open that up to about this thickness. Um, in fact, snugger is better in my opinion. I'd like, it to, I'd like it to have a little bit of contact tension so that it doesn't pull back too much. And we've got the world's best assortment of oddly sized drill bits, like four of them total. So actually that looks like it's gonna be pretty good. All right, here goes, drilling into the Yi case. I'm using the old microphone inlet hole, and that's it. We're through. I'm going to try to make it as smooth as possible, but I'm not expecting a fantastic finish here. This is the definition of a hack, for certain. Um, just going to try to clean up the garbage on the back here. All right, so that is fed through. Now I'm going to try to check what clearance I have because I'd like to put a knot in the full wire um, just to help try to retain this a little bit. Nope, I'm not going to have the room to do that there. That is a bit of a shame. Um, I don't really have a better solution. I may just have to be delicate with this because the wires are going to come in here and they have to get over immediately. There's just not a lot of room for, for a knot in a cable this thick. You might be better served finding a thinner cable, but I think a lot of those are going to be those enameled wires that are so tough to work with. I'm going to do two things here. One is I'm going to cut a bit of larger shielding and slide that on first. All the way up onto the main shielding here. And then I'm going to cut an appropriate amount. This is a little estimation game. Somewhere about here. Very accurate measurements. 
I'm going to slide that over the bare wire. So the end result here, that's a bit much. Uh, uh, uh. Too much tea, I think. Right, so when I shrink this all together, it's going to close on that and make something like a double cap on the end of that. Don't worry if your wires get a little soft. As long as they're not broken, everything should be fine. So now, the extra delicate game of soldering this. I do have a solution to the problem of this jack getting pulled out. Double up your shrink wrap and just make sure it's shrunk very well at the end until it's thicker than your opening. Now that won't probably protect it from somebody really yanking on it or in a crash maybe, but it's actually stopping it pretty well. This slid through perfectly before and now it's trapped. Again, I have the world's most mediocre soldering skills. Surface mount stuff is generally not a lot of fun for me. I know this camera angle is not great, but I'm going to try to show what I can here at least. You shouldn't need to add much, if any, solder here. Because this pad is pre-tinned and we've tinned our wire, we should have enough right at the site to simply heat it up just for a bare second. I'm going to have to do this off camera. Heat it up just for a bare second and everything should flow together. So where it'd be nice to have six hands. That should do it. So now I'm going to delicately reassemble this as, as best I can without breaking anything, hopefully. One thing I've noticed is this can be a pain, at least on mine it was. This button right here is pre-sprung, so you have to hold that out of the way well enough to slide the button on this very delicate ribbon. I'm sure you've seen these before if you've opened up anything like this. It's nothing new, but it took me about 10 tries to get this seated, and I did wrinkle this a little bit. Thankfully it still works, but something to be mindful of when you're putting your ba yours back together. a little bit of luck. This will go better than last time. Everything has to drop in fairly straight. So I think you're off to a good start if that's happening for you. I had problems like this with the internal microphone. The back of the camera unit itself snags on it because it's right below that opening, below from the perspective of the camera itself. Um, just take your time feeding everything back in. Okay, so this is it back in its housing. It's still a little bit sprung from the wire being caught up here, but I think we've got it. So I'm going to throw the screws back in and just make sure we have function here. Records. Oh yes, I don't have my SD card in. Moment of panic averted. I got so used to the contour for motovlogging and it's just a single switch on. It really is nice in that respect, but the quality is simply not up to snuff and you cannot go back. I've stressed this before, 108060 is kind of the standard for today. If you're not recording at 108060 and doing anything action related, you're probably cutting yourself short. So this is a good way to use the Xiaomi Yi as a full-time motovlog or action cam with voice. Anybody that needs to do voice, you're going to want to use an external microphone. The quality of this original is just, it's terrible. I mean, the difference right here. This is trash. Right, so here it is. The Xiaomi Yi with the external mic mod. 
Now I have to modify any cases you use it with, but that shouldn't be a problem. I actually modified this one by taking off this ring that was giving me vignetting and then drilled a couple of holes on the underside of this, definitely breaking its waterproofing, but I was getting condensation on the inside of this from the temperature differential when the camera heats up. On cool mornings and nights, it was just terrible. It was ruining a lot of footage. So I'll do a follow-up with this once I've got it settled on the helmet. I'll definitely link out the adapter that I used. Um, it's excellent. I've used it now twice. It's very thick shielding and has non-enameled wires, which I found a lot of trouble finding that. If you happen to have one, great. Um, but if not, definitely check this one out. It's really easy to solder. Um, and the wire quality is, is much better than a lot of the other ones I've seen. So remember to like, subscribe, comment. I really want to hear from you guys. If you do this, let me know how it turned out. If you think of something that, that makes this a bit easier for others, definitely share it. Um, give me a shout out if you want to do a video. I'd love to see if you guys do anything like this. Um, I think it's a great little camera and, and I want to see a lot more footage that's uh, 1080 60. I'm a huge fan of it and I don't want to see anybody suffer with that 30 FPS crap. All right, guys, I'll talk to you next time. Okay, so a bit of luck here. My shielding has actually caught. <laughs> I'm pretty pleased with this. I'll have to. Mo mo Blah, 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 blah.